All right, so let's talk about indefinite integrals here for a few minutes. And by indefinite integrals, I simply just mean antiderivatives. If you don't know the difference um, <clears throat> between definite and indefinite integrals, I have a, a video that I assume would be pretty helpful called Integrals Indefinite versus Definite or something along those lines on this same uh, integrals, Calcoin integrals playlist on my channel, so go ahead and check that out. But So, uh, as a little review for what we're talking about here, antiderivatives or indefinite integrals, what do we mean by that? We simply mean if, if I have this indefinite integral of some function dx, I'm saying what function when I take its derivative, is going to give me f of x. What function's derivative, when I take it, gives me the thing that is f of x inside this part of the indefinite integral? So a good example here is x squared. When I take its prime, we all know that's 2x. So if I asked you, I turned that around, I said, what is the antiderivative of 2x dx? You would say, well, what function, when I take its derivative, gives me 2x. Oh, well, that's x squared, right? So that's all we're talking about here. So let's go ahead and get started. I want to evaluate the antiderivative of a, a relatively simple uh, second degree polynomial function here. And this one's going to have some interesting steps. It's a little extra legwork. So let's look at uh, what we have to do here. So we need the indefinite integral of x squared, okay, simple enough, plus x to the negative 2 dx. Okay, what is our first step? What do we need to do? Well, I don't like this x to the negative 2. I think this is ugly and it's going to be hard to work with. So let's go ahead and change it. Let's just, let's make it something else that we can easily work with. How about we rewrite this as the indefinite integral of x squared plus 1 over x squared, right? Is this the same thing? Yeah, of course it is. This is exactly the same thing, and now we don't have this ugly little negative x squared up there. We've changed it by putting it in the denominator of a rational function within this inside a fraction, right? So now that we've done this, we've made this easier, let's go ahead and break this up into two pieces. We can do that and say, let's break this up. We have the indefinite integral of x squared dx plus the indefinite integral of 1 over x squared dx. So we can do that. It's perfectly legal. So this is a lot, a lot easier to look at, right? So now we talked about this earlier, x squared. We can go ahead and evaluate this first piece. What is the antiderivative of the indefinite integral of x squared? Well, <coughs> Uh, we already uh, we already know that x squared prime is 2x, so it might be uh, kind of tempting for us just to say x squared, oh, okay, 2x, we're good to go. Ah, but we'd be doing the wrong thing. We would be taking the derivative of x squared. And so when you see something that's so familiar like that, it's easy just to go ahead and rush ahead and say, oh, oh, x squared prime, yeah, x squared prime, that's just 2x, we're good. So the indefinite integral of x squared is going to be 2x. Well, no, it's not. The indefinite integral of 2x is going to be x squared, but it, of course, doesn't work both ways. It's not... Uh, you can't just flip-flop it and say that if one thing is true, then the other certainly is. So uh, it doesn't work that way. We're not taking prime. We're taking the indefinite integral. So instead of what is the derivative of x squared, we're saying what function, when I take its derivative, will give me x squared. So in order to figure out this, we're going to need to do a couple of things. We're going to need to, first off, well, just one thing, really, use this neat little rule that says when we have the indefinite integral of a function to the nth power, x to the n dx, this is just, let's write that x a little better. This is this is pretty simple. All this is, is it's equal to x to the n plus 1 power over n plus 1. Now, how easy is that? That's going to save us so much time, so much legwork. So the nth power here, the nth power is just the power that we're raising x to. So our nth power in this case is going to be 2. So what is the integral of the indefinite integral of <clears throat> x squared, well, it's going to be x cubed over 3. Why is that the case? 
because x to the n plus 1, 2 plus 1 is 3, over n plus 1, which was 3. So x cubed over 3. So that's taken care of. We're done there. So now we need to figure out the indefinite integral of 1 over x squared. Hmm, what do we do here? Well, we don't even really need to do any work. The indefinite integral of 1 over x squared is just negative 1 over x because it should be a rule that we just remember in our heads, or at least you should have up to this point. Uh, you could, you, if you see, if you're trying to take the derivative, you're trying to differentiate uh, 1 over x or negative 1 over x, then you know it's just 1 over x squared because what's 1 over x prime? Well, negative 1 over x squared. So this is uh, 1 over x squared is just negative 1 over x prime. That's all we have to worry about. So since negative 1 over x prime is uh, 1 over x squared, we know that the integral of 1 over x squared is negative 1 over x. So we've got that right here, negative 1 over x. Because when we take this prime, and it's maybe slightly confusing, when we take this prime, we're just going to get 1 over x squared. So let's... Uh, all right, great. So it is x cubed over 3 plus negative 1 over x. This is, this is our final answer. This is the indefinite integral, except we need to do two things. One is necessary. One is just makes it look nicer. I think the first thing that we can do is this looks okay, but it's kind of ugly. So what if we, we take this and we bring it up here and we say, yeah, let's, let's clean it up just a little bit and turn it into, how's this sound, x to the fourth minus 3 over 3x, you know, just do some algebraic simplification. That's good. But then there's one other thing that I think we can do, that not think we can do, think we have to do here. Let me erase this so we can get some room. Uh, that was an optional step, turning this into x to the fourth minus 3 uh, over 3x. But then we have to do one more thing. We have to add a plus c on the end. So plus c. All this is, this c here is a little constant, and this is because if we were taking the derivative of uh, this function right here, we would get this. But what if we were taking the derivative of this function plus 7, or plus 14, or plus Graham's number, or plus any constant? Well, the derivative of any constant is always going to be 0. So we don't know in our heads if there's going to be a constant after this or not. There could be in a you know, real-life application. So we always have to put c because it doesn't change the function. And you, I know what you're sitting here thinking. Okay, well, what if it's not plus 17? What if it's not plus 6 or whatever? What if it's just plus nothing? There's, there is no constant. This was the actual uh, integral. Well, then in that case, it would be plus 0 because the, would that change it? No. And the derivative of 6 is 0 just as much as the derivative of 0 is 0. So this is our final answer right here, this x to the 4 fourth minus 3 over 3x plus c. I'll make this slightly prettier. All right, so there we go. We're done. x to the fourth minus 3 over 3x plus c. Quick recap of what we did. We were taking an indefinite integral, uh, excuse me, or an antiderivative, and uh, our function was, the, uh, was x squared minus x to the negative 2, and we First, we clean things up a little bit by killing that uh, ugly negative 2 in the uh, exponent space there. And then we broke up our integral into two separate integrals. We took those antiderivatives and we smashed everything back together algebraically to make it a little prettier. And then we added a constant to the end and we are done. Voila.